Welcome to Virginia Union University's Samuel DeWitt Proctor School of Theology weekly service of worship and prayer in Coburn Hall inside the Alex Bledsoe James Memorial Chapel. Welcome. brothers and sisters, we meet you, greet you in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We're delighted and grateful for this opportunity to bring a word to you today out of the book of Isaiah, the 41st chapter, beginning with the 10th verse, Isaiah 41, beginning in that 10th verse, hear the word of God. So do not fear, for I am with you, and do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you, and I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Grass withers and flowers fade, but the word of our God will stand forever. For just a few moments, I want us to consider this thought, living fearlessly. If we could be honest and transparent this afternoon, there are things that induce fear in our lives and invite us to be fearful. And all those believers, we are taught that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power and love and a sound mind. Yet if we're being honest and transparent this afternoon, we would have to confess that there are moments when and where we have been fearful in our lives. Moments when what we were going through or facing got the best of us. Moments where we weren't sure of how things would turn out. 
My brothers and sisters, we're living in a moment of history where we're not sure of how things will turn out. And if we are not careful, we can fall victim to our fears. As we face a global pandemic, police brutality, civil unrest and protests, as we live with the current reality of violence in the streets of Richmond, wildfires in California and tropical storms and hurricane force winds in the Atlantic, as we continue to combat social injustice and racial insensitivity, and if the truth be told, many of us are feeling fearful over this new reality called virtual based learning. Many of us are in places and mental spaces where we are not certain about this new technological space we share or whether we will be able to trust the process and finish what we've started. And it is this growing sense of uncertainty and unpredictability that if we are not careful, can leave us feeling fearful. This is where we find the people of God this morning. They are facing the specter of a difficult journey home, the daunting task of rebuilding what was destroyed and in their minds, an uncertain future. And despite God's words of comfort beginning in chapter 40, the people of God are finding it hard not to be fearful. And we've all been there, but the assurance of our text is that we don't have to be fearful. In fact, this text provides five reasons we can live fearlessly. Let's walk through the text together. Beginning in verse 10, God says to the people of God, fear not, for I am with you. Beloved, the first reason provided for us is to, in terms of why we can live fearlessly is because of who is with us. Verse 10 reminds us that God is with us. In fact, he told them back in verse 9, I've chosen you and have not cast you off. And what I love about that assurance is that it reminds me that God has promised never to leave us nor forsake us. It reminds me this afternoon that God is an ever-present help in the time of trouble. It's a reminder that we can pass through waters because God is with us. And when we pass through rivers, they will not drown us. And when we walk through the fire, we will not be burned. It's a reminder of a shepherd who would become king by the name of David, who declared, even when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, that I don't fear any evil, for you are with me, and your rod and your staff will comfort me. Beloved, we don't have to fear because God is with us. And I don't know who this is for this afternoon, but if God be with us, then who can stand against us? We don't have to be fearful because God is with us. And once we grasp that revelation, we can say like the psalmist in Psalm 56 and 3, when I'm afraid, I put my trust in you. We can declare like David in Psalm 27 and 1 that the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. And though war may arise against me, even in this will I be confident. God says, I'm with you, but not only that, he says, I don't want you to be dismayed, I don't want you to be discouraged. I don't want you to become despondent, for I am your God. Child of God, my sisters and brothers in Christ, if we want to live fearlessly, we must embrace the revelation of who our God is. You see, the designation of I am is a reminder that God is more than enough. He is, after all, El Shaddai. He is, after all, the great I am. He is, after all, the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the one who is to come and the one who is. And whenever I hear I am, it reminds me that God is all that we need. It reminds me that he is God all by himself. It reminds me that he is God and besides him, there is no other. And I need to remind us this afternoon that when we grasp that revelation of whose we are, and who God is, we are less likely to be fearful. When we understand who God is, we can truly live fearlessly. J.B. Phillips wrote a book entitled, Your God is Too Small, in which he argued that when we forget who God is, we easily fall prey to fear and discouragement. 
And what God is literally saying to the people of God this afternoon is to expand your vision of what is possible with and through me. Expand your understanding of my greatness. God is reminding them and us that I'm greater than any problem you encounter. I'm greater than any circumstance you face, and I'm greater than any situation you're currently confronted by. Beloved, we can live fearlessly when we have grasped the revelation of God's divine presence. But not only do we need the assurance of God's divine presence, we also need the evidence of his divine power. And I love what God says next. He says, you can live fearlessly in the midst of this moment because I will strengthen you. The word for strengthen literally means divine might or power. And I know, I know, I know we want folk to think and to believe that we have it all together. I know we want folk to think we have it all under control. I know we want folk to believe we are the strong ones. But can I suggest that we all are frail? We all have some faults and we all have failed a time or two. But the good news is we serve a God who knows our frailties, our faults, and our failings. We serve a God who knows we get weak and we grow weary. We serve a God who knows all about us. And this God says to the children of Israel, you can live fearlessly because when you are weak, I am the one who will strengthen you. And I don't know who this is for, but I feel led to tell somebody that God is able to strengthen you. I feel led to let somebody know that God ain't through with you yet. I feel led to let somebody know that when you are weak, that is when you are strong. And I feel something compelling me to assure you that youth will faint and young men will utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. I feel a Holy Ghost unction and anointing to remind you of Colossians 1 and 11, which declares God will strengthen you with his great power so that you will not give up when trouble comes, but you will be patient. God strengthens us, but watch this, God also supports us. The text says it this way, I will help you. And so beloved, we can live fearlessly because of God's divine help. When we can't find a way, God is able to make a way. When doors are shut in our faces, God is able to open doors no man or woman can shut. Even when we look to the hills, we can testify that all of our help comes from the Lord. Child of God, let me remind you this morning, this afternoon, that God hasn't brought you this far to leave you now. And I simply want to remind us that this same God is the God of Psalm 46, of whom the psalmist declared that God is an ever-present help in our time of trouble. This is the same God who helps us in our time of trouble. The same God who Psalm 54 and 4 testified is our help. The one who sustains us is the same God who's helping us right now. And he's helping us as we navigate the pandemic of COVID-19 and the pandemic of racism 1619. He's helping us to negotiate this economic depression. He's the same God that Hebrews 13 and 6 declares is our helper. And because he's our helper, we don't have to fear because what can man do to us? And I know I'm in the company of folk who knows all of our help came, comes, and will come from the Lord. And I'll make a witness, I'll make one witness if you make another who, who don't mind testifying and being open and honest and transparent, who can testify that God helped me when I couldn't help myself. He helped me out of some troubling situation. He helped me out of some difficult moments. He helped me when family and friends turned their backs on me. And I believe I have some company who knows that God is able to help you even in the tight spots where God found you in a, between a rock and a hard place. But your testimony is he may not come when I want him to, but he's always right on time. Beloved, finally, we can live fearlessly because God will sustain us. In other words, God will keep us. God says, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Please don't miss this. God's right hand was associated with his military power. 
And so in essence, God is saying the way I strengthen you, the way I support you, the way that I assure you of my presence is I will fight your battles for you. Isn't that good news to know that God will fight your battles? But it gets better because he says not only will I fight your battles, but I'm also going to leave you some evidence. Look at verses 11 and 13. God says the evidence of my fighting for you is this. Behold, all those who incensed against you shall be ashamed and disgraced, and they shall be as nothing, and those who strive with you shall perish. Verse 12 says you shall seek them and not find them. Those who contend with you, those who war against you, shall be nothing as a non-existent thing. Verse 13 says, for I, the Lord your God, will uphold you and hold your right hand, saying to you, fear not, I will help you. And I need to remind us this afternoon that God is no respecter of persons. And that if God did it before, God is able to do it again. I'm done, but allow me to confirm your suspicions this afternoon. That God is and God still is. God is still in the saving business. He's still in the healing business. He's still in the delivering business. And we can live fearlessly because we know that greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. We can live fearlessly because we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that if God be for us, who can stand against us? We can live fearlessly because we believe that all things work together for the good of them that love God and are called according to his purpose. And we can live fearlessly because we've lived long enough and through enough to know that no weapon formed against us shall be able to prosper. So do not fear, for I am with you. And do not be dismayed, for I am your God. And I will strengthen you and help you. And I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Amen, amen, and amen.
that you've enjoyed this week's worship services. May the grace and the love and peace of God be with you.